Today we're going to learn how to make images really stand out by using Camera Raw in Adobe Photoshop. Now I'm really excited because it's Photoshop CC 2015 which is the brand new release which only came out a couple of days ago and apparently there has been some pretty good improvements on Camera Raw. Now as you know already, as you could in 2014, you can now import JPEG images into Camera Raw so you're not just stuck with the raw type of files which is great news for photography which can't shoot in camera raw so let's open up Adobe Photoshop straight away to see the new interface if you've not seen it there's nothing really different obviously the intro picture is a little bit different but it's pretty much the same as before so I'm going to drag and drop the image that I'm going to use into Adobe Photoshop now as you can see it's a really nice image the the colors at the front are really nice but I'd like to bring through the background a little bit more and remove this bluish haze that's all over the picture and I think that camera roll would really make that stand out a little bit more now I've not edited this picture previously and the reason for that is I wanted to do it live and I wanted to mess around with the functions mess around with the settings so you could see how I play around with it and each person will have their own take on this but I'm going to show you how to do it and the sort of settings that I use as well so to get us started duplicate the background by pressing ctrl and j on the keyboard so you've got layer one in the layers panel go over to filter and then convert for smart filters so as I said I'm using a JPEG so you can do this with pretty much any type of image file so now it's converted for a smart filter you want to go to filter and then go to camera raw filter and then that's going to load up camera raw for you so as you can see it's a .jpg and I can now mess around with pretty much everything but we're just going to run through the basics today and I will go more in depth in camera raw because there's a lot to cover in another tutorial so we're just going to mess around with the basic exposures contrast highlights shadows whites blacks blah 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 so on and so forth now to get yourself started if you're in a little bit of a rush then you can just click auto and that will make some adjustments for you some pretty standard adjustments now in images I've used in the past this hasn't worked but for auto on this this is pretty good but I want to make my own adjustments because I know how I want this image to look so I'll just click on default so temperature firstly it's pretty self-explanatory if you go over to the blue it's going to give it a lot more blue and make it freezing cold if you go over to the right hand side it's going to make it a lot warmer so I'm just going to have mine increase to I'd say about 10 and just warm that up a little bit again I am trying to get rid of this sort of bluish haze now I'm going to leave the tint as it is if you do want to adjust it it's the greens and the purples but I'm going to leave mine at zero so that looks pretty nice for me now the exposure again is the lights and the darks of the whole image so if you increase the exposure that's really going to white it out and if you decrease the exposure that's really going to blacken it up so say for example you've got uh, a skyline that's been blown out completely and it looks pretty white then if you decrease the exposure that will bring in a little bit more of the detail of the skyline for you so for me i think i'm going to reduce mine to I'd say minus 1.5 maybe. No, it's still a little bit too much. I'd say I'd go to minus 1 and that looks a little bit better. Now I'm going to increase the contrast because I do like to have a lot of contrast in my images. So let's say about 80. And that looks pretty good, pretty nice high contrast. Have a mess around with the highlights which is the lighter parts of the image. So as you can see at the top, it's just changing from lighter to darker. So to put a bit of a contrast in there, I'll add the highlights up to about 70. So that just brightens the top of the image up a little bit as well. The shadows is gonna be the darker parts of the image. So if I decrease that down, that's gonna just darken all of the shadows in the image, or you could lighten it up and it will lighten the shadows. So. I think mine looks all right as it is I'll just leave it at zero next is the whites. so if I increase the whites it's going to completely white out the whole of the image and again it's going to do the same 
for the whites and take them completely out of the image. So it will lighten the whites and darken the whites. So if I add this to about, well, about five plus five maybe, that looks pretty good for me. I don't want to mess around with it too much and completely blow out the image. So next we've got the blacks. If you take the blacks down, it's going to really, really add a lot of black to the darker parts of the image at the bottom. And again, if you increase it up, it's going to make them blacks completely white or as, as bright as the rest of the image where possible. So just to keep a bit more contrast, I think I'll keep it at zero. I might even change it to minus 10 and just darken the blacks down just a little bit more. Now the clarity is sort of your HDR effect. So if you drag the clarity all the way across, you're going to get a really super sort of HDR effect. And this does work really well on sort of landscape pictures and, and stuff like that. But if you're, if you're, you know, if you're shooting people and you want to soften the tones just a little bit, just take it down. But I want to have a little bit of a HDR effect. So I think I'll go to about 65 and that looks pretty good to me. So next is the vibrance and the saturation. So you can mess around with the overall color of the image in this. So if you wanted to go a little bit softer, then just take the vibrance down and that's going to just desaturate it a little bit, but you can still tell that it's in color, but it is, well, mostly desaturated. So for me with the vibrance, I just want to take that up just a little bit and add a little bit more vibrance to the image. So I'd say I'd go to about 20 and that looks really nice for me. And same again with the saturation. If you go all the way over to the left, it's going to make it completely black and white. If you go all the way over to the right hand side, it's going to completely oversaturate the image. So for this, I'm going to go to about minus five. So I've still got the vibrance in the image, but the saturation takes it out a little bit. So the colors aren't too rich, but the colors are visible. So that is pretty much the basics of Camera Raw. So if I just come out of that and just hit OK, I've got my original image at the bottom. So if I just make that invisible, you can see that that complete blue haze at the beginning, it's, it's now completely gone and there's a lot more texture and you can see the background with a lot more tones and the image looks a lot better than it did at the beginning. So the next episode, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and I'm going to show you how to use brush effects as well. So stay tuned for that. I hope you like this tutorial guys. Do not be a pen tool. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.